tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. I have a standard coin here in my hands. It has a head side and a tail side. Now if I flip it, you all know there's a 50% chance of it landing on either side. But what if I told you that we could change these odds? I became an iOS developer at the age of 13 years old. It was in my eighth grade when I launched and developed my first iOS app, Zipshare, and I found myself about a month later spending the weekend at my uncle's house. One morning, we were sitting across from each other, facing his pool in his front yard, when he asked me, Rohan, why do you like computers so much? It was at this moment that I realized I had never been asked this question before, nor had I really thought about it myself. I took a quick moment to gather my thoughts, and this is what I said to him. I told him that a computer geek like me would normally respond to this by saying that the reason they liked to code was because of the immense satisfaction they would receive after building and launching their product. And even though this does hold some truth for me, it was not my driving reason for coding. Instead, what I told him was that the reason I love to code so much, the reason technology motivated me so much, was because of the small things. It's the pleasure I would get from making a square into a circle, from fixing a two-week-old bug, or even just from rounding a corner. From the moment I started coding, technology has become a shared interest between my dad and myself. Together, on our trips back and forth from school, we would immerse ourselves in discussions about the hottest technologies and the possibilities a technologically-based future held. And these possibilities are what I would like to explore with you all today. Let's go back to the coin and take a look at the head side. It's 2050. I'm racing through the stadium as the timer ticks down, sending a drop of sweat down my forehead. I glance up ahead to see an open path and extend my leg, kicking the ball into the goal. Game over says the automated voice. And with that, I take off my VR glasses to find my personal robot, Jim, standing beside me. <laughs> Virtual and augmented reality are projected to hit one billion users by the year 2025. 216 million of these people will be using their VR tech to entertain themselves through video games. However, VR will become more than just entertainment. It will disrupt the education industry by immersing students in new worlds. It will disrupt the retail industry by allowing consumers to visualize before buying, and it will disrupt the healthcare industry by allowing doctors to carry out procedures and simulations before in real life. Now, another interesting technology besides VR is in the field of robotics. Our society has been trying to figure out how we can program robots so they can be passed off as human. In the near future, this may very well be a possibility. This is so important because AI has the power to create convenience through the elimination of simpler tasks. Now, back to my personal robot, Jim. I'm sitting inside my living room, and Jim, who's standing beside me, holds a tray filled with my breakfast. Synthetic biology working its magic once again, huh, I say. You know it, Jim replies, as he places the tray on the table in front of me. To this day, it amazes me that we can make food out of thin air. Once I'm done eating my breakfast, I'm direct outside, where I get into my self-driving car. The car then takes me to the airport, and from there, I get into my supersonic jet and head to China in 30 minutes for a business meeting. Even though the picture we created here looks really nice, it's not the only possibility. There's always another side to the coin, the tail side. It's 2050 once again. Only this time, I'm not playing a video game. Instead, I'm sitting in my living room, watching the daily news, as I think about how my coworkers and I have recently been laid off. The news covers a tragic event where drones and self-driving cars were manipulated in a terrorist attack. Saddened by the event, I do my best to reach out to some of my close friends, only to receive no response for them. My hunch is that they've been preoccupied inside their virtual worlds. Just as I'm about to go to bed, I get a call from my sick mother. I put on my AR glasses and we begin to talk about how all the health insurance companies are refusing to provide her with their services. Together, we're trying to figure out how we can get her the best health care. The only problem is my financial situation is not the best. As we flip the coin here, 
we get the chance to see a totally different image. Instead of virtual reality being used for entertainment, we see it as the root cause for social isolation. Instead of artificial intelligence creating convenience, we see it leading to hardships through job loss, and instead of self-driving cars reducing traffic, we see them being used as weapons of terror. Clearly, there are multiple futures we could find ourselves in. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, what future do we want, and what can we do to make it happen? When I was young, I would often play this game called the green glass door. Using logic, players would try to figure out what special words could open this magical door. When we look towards the future, unfortunately, there isn't one special trick that can unlock this door or change the odds. In my opinion, there are three tricks, and I discovered them while building my app, ZipShare. And here are the three tricks. Number one, our society is constantly changing and developing at an extremely fast rate. Every day, someone creates something new or comes up with this special idea. This means that our role as individuals is to be keeping up with this change and constantly learning. Essentially, we need to become our own educators. Number two, building my apps taught me that product and problem have this extremely dynamic relationship. People would constantly ask me, why are you building this? What's its purpose? What goals do you have? And these questions told me the most obvious thing. When you're building something, it's not for yourself. It's for the 7.6 billion people out there. So the next time you're creating something, stop thinking about what you want and start thinking about what others want. Think about the big picture. Number three, innovation takes a long time. Change takes a long time. Action takes a long time. So the question becomes, how do we get through this time? How do we enjoy this time? How do we stay motivated? As a software engineer, I take change one small step at a time. And it's these love of small things that get me through these long processes. And without them, none of my apps would have been a possibility. So when we look at all the possibilities our future holds, let's take a step back. Let's take some time to look at the people around us. Let's take some time to truly know who we are, because it's all of us, the engineers, the future entrepreneurs, the writers, the politicians, that are going to create the future we want. Together, we can become our own educators. Together, we can find solutions to the problems. Together, we can take it one small step at a time. Together, we can change the odds. Thank you.